Hi everyone and welcome to another of our midweek devotions. As we continue to grieve for Robert, I thought that I would share a few passages and thoughts that I pray will help us as we grieve. If you have a Bible, I would advise not using it today. I know that's a bit shocking, right? But I'm going to be given a number of different Bible passages. And so to spare you flicking pages throughout the whole devotion, I've put them on the screen. You might want a pen and paper so you can write down some of the references to look at in your own time at a slower pace. So the first thing I want us to see as we grieve is that we weep. We weep. Weeping is a natural response to death and suffering. It's an expression of our sorrow. And I want to say to us, it's okay to weep. The Bible mentions weeping or crying over 400 times. Let me give a couple of examples. Job, who was a man who faced much grief in his life, says in Job 16:16, 16, 16, My face is red with weeping. Dark shadows ring my eyes. Psalm 6 verse 6 says, All night long I flood my bed with weeping and drench my couch with tears. My eyes grow weak with sorrow. Other examples are Abraham weeps when his wife Sarah dies, King David when he's told of his friend Jonathan's death, his son Absalom's death, he weeps. The Lord Jesus when his friend Lazarus died in John 11, he wept. We sometimes think that weeping or expressing emotion is a sign of weakness. We've got to hold it together. No, it's okay to be sad. It's okay to cry. It's okay to weep. It's a right response to death. There have been tears in our home on a number of occasions over the past week. We loved Robert and we were really missing. It's okay to weep. As we weep, know also that God comforts. God comforts. 2 Corinthians 1 verse 3 says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of all compassion and the God of all comfort. God looks at our sufferings and sorrows and he has concern. He is compassionate. He is the God of all comfort. At times of suffering, we long to be comforted. We long to be helped, to be given hope that things will be better in the future. And how God brings help and gives hope to his people in the midst of grief. There's a beautiful image in Psalm 91 verse 4 where the writer describes how God will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. As we weep, he covers. He wraps his loving arms around us and he holds. He doesn't say to his children, Pull yourselves together like a harsh father. He sits with us in the sorrow. Psalm 10 verse 14 says, But you, God, see the trouble of the afflicted. You consider their grief and take it in hand. What a beautiful image that is. God sees our trouble. He considers our grief and he takes it in his hand. He bears our burdens. He hears our cries. He is with us. Psalm 34 verse 18 says, The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. The Lord is close. One of the difficult things about grieving at a time like this is that we cannot be together. We can't hug. We can't share memories of Robert over a hot drink. We can't comfort one another in the way that we might usually do. But God is not restricted like we are. He is not far away. He is near. He is close to the brokenhearted. We weep and God comforts. But God doesn't automatically and instantly take away the sorrow. The world remains a broken and suffering world. And so, thirdly, we groan. We groan. In Romans 8.23, Paul says, We ourselves... Who, has, who have the first fruits of the Spirit grown inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption to sonship, the redemption of our bodies. To groan is to express our pain, our sadness. 
And we know that this world will have many moments that will make us groan and they will continue until the redemption of our bodies. That is until the Lord Jesus returns and brings about his new creation. Until then, we will still send condolences cards and flowers. We will send get well soon cards. We will attend more funerals. And with each one, we groan, expressing our pain and sadness at what our world is like. And as we groan, we are encouraged to cry out to the Lord. We've seen recently in Revelation, the groaning cries of the saints in heaven. How long, O Lord? How long until you return and the groaning ends? In Psalm 13, verse 2, David writes, How long must I wrestle with my thoughts and day after day have sorrow in my heart? How long, Lord, will the pain, the tears, the sorrow, the grief last? It's okay for us to cry out like that in humility to the Lord. How long? It's okay to say to the Lord, this hurts. A song that has been precious to me and Ruth through grief is what a friend we have in Jesus. And the first verse says this, what a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. As we grieve, we groan. We cry out to the Lord who hears us and who bears our burdens. We weep and God comforts. We groan and lastly, God gives hope. God gives hope. As Pete shared on Sunday, we do not grieve as those without hope. We have immense hope in the face of death as we know that our Redeemer lives. Jesus has conquered the grave and so all those who die believing and trusting in him are safe with him for all eternity. Paul writes at the end of Romans 8, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present or the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. We often refer to young lovers as inseparable. Look at them, they're inseparable. Well, God and his people truly are inseparable. Nothing can come between us. At weddings, it is said, till death do us part. But with God, not even death can separate us. In fact, it draws us closer to him. In Isaiah 61, verses 1 to 3, Isaiah is speaking about the good news of the kingdom of God. And he writes this. God has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to comfort all who mourn, and provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. There will be sad days ahead, but we hope in a God who has promised a day where a crown of beauty will replace the ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of despair. Psalm 30 verse 5 says, Weeping may stay for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. We may feel as though we are going through a long night as we grieve with Sandra for Robert, but know for certain that the morning will come. Rejoicing will follow. We will one day wake in the glorious new creation, the place where God has promised to wipe every tear from our eyes. As we grieve, we weep, and God comforts. We groan, how long, O Lord? But we do not grieve without hope. Nothing can separate us from God's love. God has promised an end to the tears, an end to the weeping nights, and a future of unrivaled rejoicing. A few weeks ago, Sandra shared a song with our hub group called, How Long, O Lord? And it's a beautiful hymn that has become a, a particular favourite in our house. I've put a link to it in the playlist for this devotion. Why not give it a listen? And if you know it or you pick it up quickly, why not join in for yourself? 
and then pray afterwards. Pray for ourselves as we grieve. Pray for Sandra as she grieves. Pray for Robert's wider family and for our church family that we would grieve holding on to the hope that we have in Christ.